So you finally got your Starlink kit, but you've already got a network at your house or you want to travel with it and all you have is the crappy box that they came in. Well, here's some ideas that I came up with. I'm sure if you've got a kit, you're well familiar with this box. Just the box they ship it, ship it to you in and um, nothing real special. This, on the other hand, is Savage UTV's On The Go Kit. As you can probably already see, this isn't just a Pelican box. It's had some modifications done specifically to make it useful for a Starlink kit. Let's take a look inside. So there it is. Everything you need to take your kit on the road. Throw it in the back of your truck and not have to worry about it. There's a lot in here and it keeps everything nice and snug. All right, I've laid out everything that comes in the kit and my Starlink system in the kit or in the box. Uh, we'll go through some of the stuff that comes with it. So with the on the go kit, you get this neat little bracket that you can basically mount to a ladder or anything and throw your dishy in there. Savage UTV cuts these panels and this cradle here for your router and other accessories. This wall here keeps your dishy over here nice and snug and gives you a nice place where you can put your cables without having to worry about dirt and things getting to your dishy. This little boot here was a $10 add-on. It helps keep water out of the box if you use the, the box as a uh, platform for your dishy to stand up. We'll go over that in just a minute. And as you can see, this is plugged in over here. You may have noticed on the outside of the box that there was a plug. We'll spin around there to that in just a moment. But you can see that I've got my power ran back here. I also have an ethernet adapter strapped to the back here with a small network cable. I've got a AC to DC inverter. That way I can power it up off of the battery if I need to. I'm gonna do a little bit more work with that before we call that done. I uh, asked Savage UTV to put a ethernet pass through on the outside of the box. That way I could use my ethernet adapter with the router still in the box. I've added that one over there. Uh, that is a shielded pass through. And we'll go over why that one's shielded in just a moment. And come around to the front of this and then you can see that the router is strapped to the front. Coming around the end here see the AC plug that's right here. You can see both of the Ethernet plugs are over here. I'll set this back inside. Get all the cables squared away so the lid will close. So on the outside we have this plug here. This is designed so that we can set the pole for the dishy there and use this box as the stand instead of the X bracket that comes with your Starlink. Just a second and uh, I'll get this set up. All right, here it is set up with dishy sitting on top. You can see I have the cable ran down into the box. Take a look at what that is. It looks like on the inside. Gently raise this up. See the cable coming from the lid down into the bundle of the cable. Close this back up. Now this little boot, as I was saying, you slide this down, tighten it up, and that will help seal this out, seal water out of this, keep your box watertight. Now while Savage UTV says you shouldn't power this up with everything in a box, due to heat concerns it's kind of cool this evening and i could see times that this would be useful so let's take an extension cord plug it in over here on the end we'll give it a minute or two probably skip forward the magic of editing all right and we can see she's powering up and moving around Probably going to be a bit obstructive. We're underneath a roof, but at this point, you should be able to pull up the Starlink app on your phone and start getting things moving. 
So with that, you may have noticed that I have my cable between my router and my Starlink, or between my router and my dishy, cut uh, with some RJ45s on it. Give me just a second and I'll uh, get that set up and show you what that's for. It's starting to get a little dark, bear with me here. So, as I mentioned earlier, I put this extra shielded pass-through here. The reason I put a shielded pass-through in is because I cut the cable. The cable is a shielded cable. So I wanted that shielding to pass through all the way back to the router. You may have noticed this guy in the box earlier. This is just a surge protector. has uh, shielding from one connector to the other, even though I don't have it connected to a ground cable. It's what I had laying in the office so that I could uh, put this together, leaving the cable inside the box. But as you can see here, this would uh, essentially allow you to leave the router set up in the box the way you're not supposed to and leave all your cables on the outside so you can make sure your box is still watertight. So as you see here, cable is coming over, coiled up here, and then I have Dishy sitting on top of a pole. Now, while I have the pole here, you may also use this mount on the ladder for a RV or just strap it to a pole or a post in a field. Uh, really, the possibilities are endless, but you can see this is basically the same thing, just set up so that we can close the box with this still inside. So let's go ahead and do that. You see I've got the plug on the top, everything's closed up. Let's get some power going. Now you can imagine this sitting in a field, maybe it's missing a little bit. Maybe you just want to set this up really quickly and you don't really have a safe place to put your router. So throw it back in the box, throw it underneath your truck to keep the elements off of it. Plug it into some power, throw a dishy up on the roof or off the ladder or something. Sorry about this other dish getting in the way. Um, but that is that method. Um, the official method from Savage UTV would be to leave the lid open when you've got this deployed and just run the cable out the opening. But uh, I want to have the option to be able to set things up a little bit more, a little bit more securely uh, in the event that I needed to. Plus, I already had plans of cutting the cable so I could hardwire Dishy into my existing network here at the house, which is what that little surge protector on the post is. We'll get into that in just a moment. For now, we'll uh, cut to the magic of editing until the uh, dishy wakes up. Well, I lost a little bit of video here. Uh, as expected, with uh, dishy connected to the outside of the box here, it did boot up and has internet. Um, I have since moved the cable over, uh, trying to record more video, but found out I didn't have the thing recording. Um, as you saw earlier, this is a just a ubiquity surge protector. Uh, again, I don't have a ground cable here. I just needed something shielded that I could mount to this post so that I could have a place to plug my dishy in whenever I come home. Um, same thing that was in the box. Basically, this cable goes down into my, uh, my existing network in the house so I can wire this in for backup internet or additional bandwidth. And this is providing 54 volts uh, PoE. Uh, I'll provide a link to a Reddit post that uh, helped me put this together. Anything 48 volts to 56 volts uh, with a PoE injector um, specifically pinned for the dishy will get things up and running and allow you to hardwire it into your network. So as you can see, uh, the cable for dishy just comes down, still laying here on the ground, and then back up to dishy on the same post it was on just a moment ago. So, the reason I did this is uh, I wanted to be able to have Starlink directly connected to my existing network and um, by adding the extra port on the outside of this box that allowed me to be able to use the same cable whether I'm home or on the road and I can come home easily set this up in just a couple of minutes or if I'm home and want to go on a trip somewhere I can easily disconnect that take down dishy, put those items in this box, 
throw this box in the back of the truck and be ready to go in about five minutes to go have internet in the field somewhere. So I'm back in the office. Um, the picture you're seeing on the screen right now is a picture of the network rack where Dishy is plugged into the network. So we'll start at the top. The shelf at the top on the left side has a fiber patch panel uh, connecting some fiber to a different area on my property. The next device to the right on that shelf is a Tycon PoE injector. This PoE injector allows you to inject uh, whatever DC power that you have external. So you can see the black cable going from the green connector on that PoE injector down to the green connector on the power supply below it. That is what is providing the 54 volts of DC power to the four pair PoE injector and consequently out to Dishy. On the back side of that PoE injector is a data connector that comes around and plugs into the SFP port that you see on the right side of the UDM Pro. That would be the third or the second device down. The next device to the right is the white PoE injector. The white PoE injector is my primary internet that is uh, my own ISP, um, just connected to some Ubiquiti Air Max equipment. And you'll notice that's plugged in with the yellow cable into port 9 on the UDM. Uh, the next device below, uh, as I mentioned, is the power supply. This power supply is an edge power from Ubiquity. Uh, it's something I had laying in the office and conveniently provided 54 volts of DC out. Um, Dishy, as I mentioned earlier, requires 48 to 56 volts of power in order to, uh, to run. Also, it um, can use as much as, I think, 100 watts is what I read of power. So this edge power is more than enough. Um, each of the two power supplies there provides 150 watts of power. So um, theoretically, this thing will do 300 watts, but I have it set up as a uh, primary secondary configuration. So basically, I just have redundant 150 watt power supplies powering the dishy. As you can see there on the left, it is also network managed, so I can connect to it remotely. I can keep an eye on how much power dish is drawing um, at any given time, whether it's melting snow in the winter or just running or even if I just need to reboot it remotely. Um, I also have a ping watchdog set up on this device that if it can't ping Dishy uh, for a period of five minutes, it will go ahead and cycle the power and restart Dishy. I've had that happen once already, so I set up the ping watchdog and hopefully we won't have that happen again. Uh, running on down the stack, um, the next device down is the UDM. That's the, the one in the middle. Or, sorry, UDM Pro. I've had this device for a while. Um, back, This is uh, one that came out of early access. Uh, the device below that is a um, USW24 PoE Pro, I believe is the model number. Uh, it's the one that has PoE++ ports on it. I uh, needed plus plus for some things on my network, so that's why that exists. Uh, the next thing down is uh, one of the OCD panels that's currently in early access, and I suppose that's about all I can say about that. Um, and below that, you just see power and some other junk uh, access point. Um, that's pretty much all that we have going on here. Flipping over to the Unified Network Console. Uh, you can see on the left hand side here that we are in fact connected to Starlink directly. Um, so with having this hardwired into the network I don't have a scenario where I have an extra wireless network from the Starlink router. I don't have the router or the Ethernet adapter hanging out in my network rack as something else I have to pack if I want to take it somewhere. Um, as you can see this really just made it very easy for me to disconnect uh, throw things in a box and be on the road so that I can go somewhere else. We'll close out by showing you that I was able to actually get Dishy's interface up in my web browser. Um, this is able to be done with uh, just adding a static route in your Unified Network uh, controller or if you have some other router uh, just add a static route there pointing the network 192.168.100.0 uh, slash 24 to the next hop of your WAN interface. In my case it's just WAN. Uh, eventually it will be WAN 2 as my backup interface. Um, but that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, as you can see this setup helps me uh, be able to have backup internet or quickly throw things in 
to a case and get on the road uh, or vice versa get things set back up when I come home so I uh, hope you found this interesting